Hi everyone, in this video I'll be explaining what mixed networks are. So mixed networks, otherwise known as mixed nets, are a type of routing protocol. Uh, some also call it a network architecture, uh, which enables anonymity on the internet. So the primary objective of a mixed net is to enable the sending of messages over the internet without revealing the sender's identity or location. Right, and it's pretty similar to the Tor protocol. Uh, Tor stands for the Onion Router. I'm pretty sure some of you are familiar with the Tor protocol. Uh, so mixnets bear several similarities to Tor, in the sense that network traffic is also relayed through a series of nodes uh, slash proxy servers, uh, typically located in different geographical locations. Uh, so let's say we have Alice, and we have Bob. Uh, in this case, Bob can be a website, or just another person Alice is trying to email. In a traditional internet routing system, Alice doesn't choose her own route. She basically connects to Bob directly, right? Uh, even though in the real world, the packets do pass through a certain number of nodes, uh, there is no privacy component to this, right? Um, let's erase that. Uh, so in Tor, Alice chooses a certain path or sequence of nodes to connect to Bob. So for example, she can choose this node, followed by this node, followed by this node before going to Bob, right? Um, so each node only knows the existence of the nodes directly adjacent to it. So for example, this node, it only knows about this node, and it only knows about this node. It doesn't know that the original message was from Alice, and it doesn't know that the intended recipient is Bob. Right? So this is designed to circumvent any sort of uh, local surveillance, such as your uh, ISP or your local government. So for example, let's say this is country A, and this is, uh, let's say this is the government of country A, and the government of country A can observe anything, all the traffic between all nodes inside the country, right? So in order to get to Bob, Alice has to go through country A. So she uses this node, she uses this node, she uses this node, and then she goes to Bob, right? The adversary only knows that Alice is talking to this node and that this node is talking to this node. Uh, the government doesn't know that you're talking to Bob at the end of the day. So the way that each node only knows about the preceding and subsequent node uh, makes the whole network resistant to malicious nodes. Uh, so let's get rid of this first. So the key difference between a mixed network and a Tor network is that a Tor network is meant for real-time traffic. Uh, so for example, uh, if you want to read the news, browse websites, uh, watch video, right? Uh, mixed networks can't really do that. Uh, so consequently, Tor networks are less secure, right? So uh, let's say, for example, uh, the adversary can observe uh, all of your traffic here and if you're using Tor if you use a sequence of nodes any random sequence of nodes right uh, your adversary is pretty much going to be able to tell that uh, there's data coming in this way going out this way coming in this way going out this way coming in this way going out this way so it can basically establish that you are, are Alice is connecting to Bob uh, simply by observing the traffic, right? Uh, so mixnets uh, counter this uh, with each node, in this case called a mix. So each node is called a mix. Each node, each mix basically stores packets until a certain criteria is met. Right. So, for example, let's say uh, 
this specific node receives packets, receives four different packets. Receives Alice's packet first, this packet second, this packet third, this packet fourth, right? What what this mix will do is what it'll wait until it re it's received all four packets, and then it'll shuffle the order in which it sends out the packets. So for example, it might send four first before sending two, before sending Alice's packet, before sending three out, right? So what that what 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 that uh, does is that the adversary basically doesn't know which input packet corresponds to which output packet, right? Since everything's encrypted, uh, the adversary just knows that this node is receiving and sending a lot of stuff to lots of random people. Uh, so the way this is done is something called mixing strategy, uh, which we'll go into a little bit later. So basically, this makes it really difficult for any external party to conduct traffic analysis since the flows are broken up and reordered so it's difficult to determine uh, which specific outgoing message corresponds to a specific incoming message for a given node right uh, but because of this criteria where it has to wait for all of the packets to come in yeah uh, you can see that mixed nets can't really be used for time sensitive things so typically mixed nets are used for things like emailing or posting to a website or a blog where uh, really fast response time isn't something necessary. So how do mixed nets work? Uh, so each message is encrypted using uh, public key cryptography. Uh, so the resulting encryption is layered like a Russian doll, except each doll is the same size and the message is at the innermost layer, so the message for Bob, right? So you have a couple of nodes, and uh, each layer of the doll is encrypted with the public key of the corresponding node, right? And additionally, each layer is salted by adding a random string at each layer to prevent the adversary from guessing messages. Uh, and of course, this random string is discarded at the end of the day. So what happens is, uh, as a proxy or a mix receives a packet, it'll strip off its own layer of encryption using its private key. Uh, this will re reveal where to send the message next, and then it'll send the message out when it's time. And then this node does the same thing. It uses its own private key to decrypt its layer of the doll, right? And then after an appropriate amount of time, it sends the packet. Right. So there are two main components of mixed nets. The first is the mixing strategy. So uh, how does the node determine how long to hold on to each packet? Uh, how many packets should be mixed together? Basically, there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, the most fundamental of which are packet count or time. So for example, your mix could wait until it receives 100 packets before shuffling all of them and then sending them out in a batch. Uh, likewise, it could wait for 30 minutes and then it could send out all the packets it's received in those 30 minutes, right? Uh, so pooling is a more complicated concept, which is typically how most mixed nets are actually implemented. So let's say you have a pool uh, and let's say you, you wait for 100 packets. So your pool fills up you have 100 packets now. What your mix will do is it'll randomly choose 50 and it'll send out 50 packets, right? And then now your pool only has 50 packets left and then it repeats the cycle. So it waits for more packets to come in until you reach 100 again and then it randomly chooses 50 again and sends them out. Uh, so this has the uh, chance that some packets will be delayed longer than others, which is actually really great for privacy. Uh, you can also implement packet attributes. So a user can assign attributes to packets. So for example, if you're a whistleblower, uh, you think privacy is a lot more important than latency, you can assign that like from one to 10, uh, basically. Uh, so if you value privacy, maybe in the pool, uh, your packet has a lower chance to be chosen, right? 
whereas if you value latency, maybe your packet has a higher chance of being chosen. Uh, so for different users, they can use the same network and have different results, right? So the next thing is the mix format. So this is a byte by byte description of a specific mix packet. It has to hide the length of the path, the position of the node in the path, the next node in the path, and it determines whether or not the recipient can reply to the sender without learning the identity of the sender, right? And consequently, it also determines uh, whether or not an adversary can distinguish between a forward packet, so in, the, in this case, forward packet is in this direction, or a reply packet, which is in the opposite direction. Uh, so this is just a performance comparison of certain mixnets where R is the maximum number of nodes that the system supports and S is the size of the symmetric key and P is the size of the public key. Uh, so the public key tends to be a lot larger than the symmetric key in this sense. Uh, so I basically got this table from a guy who developed the Sphinx protocol so it shows that Sphinx has the smallest overhead, or at least small enough compared to some of the other larger ones. And the security is provable. It's not heuristic and it's not broken, right? So provable security means that it's as hard as, for example, factoring. Uh, so that's all. Thanks.